And I know it sounds harsh, but are they a fake best team in the world? They're the number one ranked. The FIFA World Rankings, Gab, tell us that Belgium are the number one team in the world. They didn't look like it for much of today. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't see why they're number one in the FIFA Rankings. I'm surely you can only be a number one team if you actually Wilson. win things. Yes. Yeah. And inflict more heartbreak on Belgium's golden generation. And it's been one criticism of all Martinez's teams. It's like, play good football, good going forward, yeah. good on the eye, but suspect defensively. But I was told they're the best in the world. Well, they were actually they're not. not. Have we just set the bar too high for them, Robbo? Today, the soul searching, though. We've got so many talented individuals, but we're not playing as a team. But they went into but, this rank but number they've one. Choked, they've choked it in the, you know, the Welsh game, especially. So, no, I think pressed into a corner. I don't fancy Belgium. Wow. Because we talk about generations and I don't think they're done. Since September 2018, Belgium have been the number one ranked team in the FIFA standings, yet they have failed to win a single trophy. How can they be ranked number one if they have never truly been on top of the international stage at any point? With their star players all in their 30s, have Belgium missed their trophy window with this excellent golden generation? Will they look back on the day they hired Roberto Martinez with deep regret? And why haven't they been able to conquer tournaments and come out as the true number one team in the world? But how did they even get into this situation? Belgium had never been the go-to national team before. How did they produce so many talented players who would develop and peak during the same years? Belgium co-hosted the European Championships in 2000 and would also qualify for the 2002 World Cup through a playoff. But this would be the last time they would compete in an international tournament for 12 years, where they would finally run out again in 2014 in the World Cup in Brazil. After a horrible time at Euro 2000, crashing out in the group stages, Belgium's former technical director Michel Sablon came up with a plan to change the way they did everything. Sablon would conduct visits to elite development and performance environments around Europe. He attended France's famed Clairefontaine, Barcelona's La Masia and the historic Ajax Youth Academy. By September 2006, after a study of over 1,500 grassroots matches, a system began to be implemented in development teams. League tables were abolished in under-7s and under-8s football, where their focus would now shift from winning to simply improving. Introductory courses became free to first-time coaches, a consultancy audited every youth system at the club level, and a new national training centre was built in Tobiz. Another aspect that cannot be forgotten about is the embrace of immigrant communities in Europe and how this aided the national team, as players with roots in Africa were chosen to represent Belgium on the international stage. So who were these players that would make up this Belgian team? This is a term loosely thrown about in the footballing world, but there is no doubt that this Belgian team personified what we look for in a golden generation to a T. The players in this team achieved astounding success with their club teams, generating ridiculous transfer fees and lifting silverware left, right and centre. These players achieved global acclaim as some of the best players on the planet, earning numerous nominations for the Ballon d'Or over the years. Players that have played for Belgium over the last 10 years now litter the record books for the Belgian national team. Jan Vertonghen currently leads the standing for most appearances, but he's closely followed by eight of his international teammates in the top 10. Romelu Lukaku leads the goal scoring charts by a distance of 35 goals to his closest competitor and teammate Eden Hazard. Two of Belgium's biggest international wins have also come courtesy to this group of players and it's this domination in the qualification stages of international tournaments that have been the reason that Belgium have climbed to the highest points of FIFA's rankings over the last three and a half years. In the last eight years of qualifying, Belgium have scored 132 goals in 38 games, only conceding 21 times. The last all these positive signs in qualifying, the failure of the Belgian national team seemed minuscule. However, the way they have failed was a combination of mismanagement, injury misfortune, unlucky knockout ties, the pressure of being number one in the world, and the expectations of not only a nation, but a footballing world piled upon their shoulders. But why couldn't they replicate the success of a nation like Portugal, who share a similar population to the Belgians? Who was the person tasked with leading this group of players to the most important tournaments in a nation's history? Roberto Martinez, a polarizing character, was appointed as the manager that would charge this exceptionally talented Belgian team into combat over the next few years. Following the dismissal of Marc Wilmot after an embarrassing 2016 Euros elimination at the hands of Wales, a three-man committee met to discuss the future of the Belgian national team. Frontrunners for the job included Louis van Gaal, Ralf Rangnick and Martinez, with some fans questioning why Antonio Conte couldn't be the man to lead this once-in-a-lifetime pool of players for the next few tournaments. Martinez was eventually chosen as the committee's 
pick for the job to the disappointment of Lukaku, but there were serious questions being asked about the appointment. Martinez was not known as a serial winner and had that same year been pushed out the door at Everton after showing once again the theme of his career, which would be mirrored at Belgium. With Martinez's team, the blueprint seems to be hype building around the team, huge promise, attractive, attacking football to start, followed ultimately by disappointment. This was extremely highlighted by his time at Wigan, where they beat out Manchester City to win an FA Cup but would be relegated from the Premier League only four days later. Martinez has also adopted the role of technical director following the departure of Van Poivold in 2019. Martinez has stated that he is looking to implement a system and infrastructure for the national team that will outlive him and is not dependent on any individual. One of the main goals of Martinez while in these positions was to keep the golden generation active in football. A system was implemented whereby the Belgian players could complete their coaching badges during and in between international breaks. More than 20 of the players have taken up this opportunity, including De Bruyne, Vertonghen, Lukaku and Tielemans. Watch it fall and drop. At their first international tournament in 12 years, Belgium cruised through their group and made it into the quarterfinals of the World Cup in Brazil, eventually losing to runners-up Argentina in a close game. Undoubtedly, the 2016 Euros were a huge disappointment, losing to a determined, inspired and stubborn Wales team. The humiliation of this defeat in a tie where they were heavily favoured caused a managerial change. Under Martinez in Russia, the 2018 World Cup would lead to some memorable moments in Belgium's international history. The win against England to top the group stage unbeaten, the comeback from 2-0 down against Japan to win in the dying moments of regular time, and of course, the miraculous win over Brazil, one of football's most iconic teams. Their loss in the semi-final to eventual winners France was unfortunate, but their third place finish in the tournament led to wild celebrations as the team returned home after the tournament. Despite their sadness of the elimination, it was widely regarded as a huge success. The unravelling of the national team was evident in the semi-finals of the Nations League against Old Foes France. Up 2-0 at half-time and cruising, Belgium looked to march into the final of the tournament. An untimely tweet by the official national team account was closely followed by a collapse of Martinez's men. Three goals conceded in the final 30 minutes led to Belgium once again falling out of a semi-final to France. Redemption, success and hope filled the nation as they charged into a delayed Euro 2020 campaign. However, unlike previous tournaments, this Belgian team had the highest average age of any team in the competition. Despite this, they breezed through their group with three wins and beat out holders Portugal. The Red Devils had fire in their eyes, but unfortunately they came up against the informed team of the tournament once again. An excellently drilled Italian team dismantled a fragile Belgian squad and would go on to lift the trophy themselves. Yet again, Belgium would bow out of an international tournament without silverware. The team know it, the fans know it and the media are making sure that everyone knows the clock is ticking on this golden generation. Many have come forward to say it's this generation or never for Belgium, but how true is this statement? Yes, they may never develop players with this elite calibre at the same time again, but that does not put their chances at zero following their departure. Other underdogs have completed international upsets with much less than Belgium have had at their disposal. There are also battles with an inferiority complex within the squad. Following their defeat to France in the Nations League semi-final, De Bruyne came out to say, with all due respect, we are just Belgium. This may be the psychological barrier that Martinez later came forward to describe. So perhaps the problem had not been with the talents of the squad or the ability of the coaching staff, but instead the weak mentality of the squad. As part of Martinez's plans to build a solid infrastructure before he leaves, the Belgian national team are building Project 2026. Here, the coaching staff and directors are tracking players who will be hitting their primes by the time the 2026 World Cup rolls around. On a board at the Belgian Federation headquarters, the major criteria are listed as follows. Players born between 1997 and 2008, players who have played in the Champions League, players playing 75% of minutes for their club, or players that have transferred for over 20 million euros. Players pioneering this seem to be Jeremy Doku, Albert Lokonga and Yuri Tielemans. There are also big expectations for Yari Vasharin and Charlotte de Ketlara. A similar talent ID process is underway for the women's team, called Project 2027, ahead of a World Cup that Belgium hoped to partly host. Memories only with the Winter World Cup on the horizon, it will ultimately be the last chance for some of Belgium's brightest stars to lift a major international trophy. Unless the World Cup is lifted, many football fans will write off Martinez's tenure as a failure. However, that view on the team seems short-sighted. These years will inevitably be looked at as the real glory days of Belgian football. There will be talk of when this team beat Brazil at a World Cup, had multiple Premier League winners, and two players playing for Real Madrid, one of which being claimed as the best goalkeeper in the world. The story of this golden generation has not yet been written and they will look to flip the narrative by December 18th. 
If you enjoyed this video, show your support for my small YouTube channel by liking and subscribing to let me know I should keep making videos like these before checking out this video about the biggest footballer on the YouTube platform.